What's up, fam? I'm in the Philippines. Right now, I'm obviously on the beach. There's not any waves in the Philippines. I thought there would be, but we got the mountains over here and over there. Here, I'll just show you. <laughs> I rented this little hut or whatever you want to call it for $5. And I have it all to myself the entire day. So I figured what better place to do a devotional than here. And I just haven't had a chance to do any since I've been here. Sorry, I know it's been a couple weeks. I mentioned it in one of the past devotionals. I didn't know what it was gonna be like, but since I've been here, it's been one thing after another. Not like in a stressful way or in a, uh, oh, oh, hey pup. Random dog just showed up. <laughs> that scared me. But yeah, it's been one thing after another. Not in a bad way though. It's just been so fruitful and so encouraging and so heartbreaking at times and very hot, <laughs> but today it's nice. So anyway, I'm gonna get back on track today and I'm gonna film a few devotionals and uh, you can expect to see them at least over the next handful of days. Uh, I'm gonna do as many as I can today, but I also wanna spend some time in the word for myself and go for a little swim. I might even rent one of those tubes out there Apparently there's sea urchins in the water though, so you gotta wear sandals. Uh, I asked um, the guy who drove me here, I said, are there sharks in the water? <laughs> like, I didn't know what to expect that. He said, oh no, 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 no sharks. But make sure you wear shoes because if you step on a sea urchin, that's not good. But uh, today we're starting John chapter 10. And this is an incredible, incredible chapter. I mean, I say that with every chapter because <laughs> every chapter in the Bible is incredible in its own way. And it's a living word that will speak to you in various times of your life. Even if you read the same passage 20 times, something new could still jump out at you. And that's God speaking to you in that season of your life. So I hope this blesses you. I've already went through it and read. Uh, usually I have some notes of things that I said, but I forgot my iPad, which I have my notes on. Whenever I'm at my house, I had my computer right there, but I have no Wi-Fi out here. So this is just going to be off the top, straight from the Holy Spirit. So John chapter 10, verse one, it's titled the good shepherd and his sheep. Today, we're going to be going over just the first five verses. Verse one, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. Now, real quick, sheep were very, very important in those days. That was how a family like measured their status or their wealth was by how many sheep you had among other animals as well but sheep were very important and in a city there would usually be one sheepfold where all the sheep would go uh, usually there were walls built by stone all around it and there was one way in and one way out so when it says that if anyone sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold that was a robber or a thief because the shepherd would only enter in through the door through the one door because this is referring to Jesus, who is our good shepherd. But this passage also refers to pastors who are the shepherds of their body of Christ at their church. Verse two, but the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd, like I was just saying, of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Look, the responsibilities of a shepherd are to lead, to feed, and to protect. That's a good shepherd. Is the pastor of whatever church you go to, is he leading you? Is he giving you a good example of what it is to be a man of God? Is he feeding you from the word? How do you know if you have a good pastor? If they teach you straight from the word. Now, look, there's nothing wrong with topical messages from time to time, uh, but when you have a pastor that either doesn't reference scripture at all or hardly references scripture, he goes off a bunch of stats and um, you know politics and all this kind of stuff, and then you leave there not being fed the word, what did you really learn? What did he teach you other than his opinion or his worldview? A good shepherd, a good teacher, a good pastor should be teaching you from the word of God. If it's a topical message, it should still be rooted in scripture. I personally think that every pastor, this is just my opinion, I think every pastor should teach 
verse by verse, straight through the Bible. That's the foundation of Calvary Chapel. That's the church that I go to. It's called expository teaching. And I have never learned and grown more than whenever I'm being essentially foods, um, spoon fed the word, verse by verse. It doesn't have to be one verse at a time. It could be a few verses and then explain it just like I do in these devotionals. That's why I teach the way that I do is because that's how I'm taught. And then I just, like a lot of times I'll, I'll have notes that then I'll put into my own words or something that I learned I'm able to now explain to you in that same way. But I don't, like I try not to at least explain it the exact same way. I try to put my own uh, spin on it so I'm not you know, plagiarizing. I don't know if that's the right word, but I don't wanna just say it verbatim, word for word. If I do, I usually give my pastor credit or whoever it is that I heard that from. But that's how I learn and that's how I've grown the most is because it comes straight from the word of God. So that was kind of a little side note, but it applies here. Now, when verse three and four, he says he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Look, Jesus knows everything about you. Jesus came down from heaven and lived the life of a human. So he knows what it's like to suffer. He knows what it's like to be in pain. He knows what it's like to be sad. Shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. If you're a man in particular and you were raised in a way of thinking or being taught by your parents that real men don't cry, Jesus wept. Jesus was a man. Jesus was just as much man as he is God and he wept. It's okay to cry. It's okay. I cry all the time, to be honest. Not like sobbing or weeping, but I saw a video on Instagram earlier um, that made me cry. I even shared it and put it in the comment. I was like, I'm not crying, you're crying. You're <laughs> just being funny, but it's okay. Like I'm in touch enough with my emotions and I'm vulnerable enough to not be scared. I don't try to hide it. It's okay to cry. It doesn't make you weak, okay? Not at all. But what I was getting at was Jesus knows everything about you. He knows your pain, he knows your suffering. Um, he knows the temptations, even Jesus was tempted. And that's how personal of a God is that we serve. Jesus didn't come for a religion. He came because he wanted a relationship with us. He came to restore humans to God because sin is what separates us. But because of Jesus, that sin can be wiped away if your faith is in him. So if you don't know Jesus currently and you're watching this devotional, it's not a coincidence that you're here. And I just want to tell you that that guilt and shame of the stuff that you've done in your past, even if you're in the body of Christ, there's no condemnation in Christ. Jesus loves you despite all of that. And he's there to help you. Let him, let him help you. A good shepherd is one who leads and feeds and protects. And Jesus is all of our good shepherd. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. You know something really incredible about sheep? So when there was one sheepfold in a city, there was a whole bunch of different sheep there and there were different shepherds who led those sheep. And still to this day in certain areas, not many places still have shepherds, but there could be a whole, let's say a thousand sheep all together. And let's say a shepherd is the shepherd of a hundred of them, just for conversation's sake. He can go to that sheepfold and he could call his sheep with his voice and those sheep, actual sheep, know his voice and they will follow him. They will separate themselves from the other 900 and follow their shepherd. And that's what it should be for us. We are sheep. The Bible depicts us as sheep and you know, not to offend anybody, but sheep are dumb. We're dumb as human beings. And we need a shepherd to lead us because <laughs> Otherwise, we're gonna get in all sorts of trouble. Otherwise, we're gonna constantly mess up. You ever seen the meme of the sheep who's like stuck in the hole and then someone pulls the sheep out and then he goes and bounces around and jumps right back into the hole? That's us. We're knuckleheads. <laughs> we really are. I actually brought that up when I was speaking at a church uh, last night and I didn't know if knucklehead was a term, but they knew what I was talking about. We need a good shepherd. And how are you gonna follow Jesus if you don't know his voice? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Now it says hearing because in those days people didn't have scrolls or the scriptures because they were very expensive. So they went to the synagogue to hear. Faith comes by hearing the word. Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word from the mouth of God. This is how God speaks to us. So make sure that you're in the word every single day, as often as you possibly can, to get to know his voice. And to coincide with that, 
please make sure that you are a part of a church that has a good shepherd, a good pastor, someone who leads, feeds, and protects. Because that's what a good shepherd does. In verse 5, they won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. There's a lot of false teachers out there. There's a lot of bad shepherds out there. And if you're starting to feel a certain way by hearing this message, or you've already been kind of feeling this about the shepherd of your church, it's time to find a new place. And I personally would recommend a Calvary Chapel because I know that the foundation of Calvary Chapels are rooted in expository teaching. God bless you. See you for the next one.